So Alex Cranmer, my weapons guy, just found a 1941 M3 half-track carrier. This thing is super cool. So I've recruited my first Lieutenant Corey. We're out here at the forward operating base in the middle of the desert, and we're gonna check this thing out. Oh man, this thing looks amazing. Must be Rick. How are you? I'm Ronnie. How's it going, Ronnie? Very good. This is my son Corey. How you doing? How are you? So Alex told me about the half track. Um, he didn't tell me anything about that. So those are M45s up there. Those uh, are M45s. Yes, sir. It's a uh, Maxon M45 quad mount. What it take to get the permits on that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking to sell my 1941 M3 half track carrier. I bought this carrier at auction in California. I had to have this M3 carrier because my father drove one in the war. This half-track actually was in combat. It's work-ready, it's gun-ready. It could shoot 2,800 rounds a minute. If I do make the sale today, I'm gonna have a grand family reunion, and hopefully there'll be monies left over. I will donate to some World War II vets. All right, I'm really, really impressed. Tell me about it. Well, my dad's a World War II vet, and I just lost him last year, and he and I had restored this. One of these actually saved my father's life. My dad went into France 12 days after D-Day, and they took mortar fire, and my father actually dove underneath one of these. Thank God for, or else I wouldn't be here. <laughs> Is this a white? Yes, White Motors assembled this. Well, it was World War II. I mean, almost every factory in this country was repurposed for something. Right. I mean, White was making sewing machines. The next thing you know, they're making military vehicles. Mm -hmm. These things were indestructible. They would go anywhere. That's why the military loved them, and they ordered so many of them. It's a tank truck. It's not anything like a tank. It, it tomato, tomato, OK? I'm calling it a tank truck. Um. Do you have any service records on it or know where it was at or anything like that? I have all the records. I have everything where it came from, where it was in Europe. OK. Do you know where it served in combat at? In France. So theoretically, this could have been the one your dad jumped under. May have been. <laughs> <laughs> so I deal with a lot of military collectors. Um, you know, they might want this. How much you want for it? 160000 with the guns, 100000 without. OK. Probably without. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I know I can technically buy it, but it's a lot of federal paperwork, and it's right. like a year or two to go through everything. And um... Yeah, we had to jump through hoops for it. Well, my buddy Ron's coming out. He's like a former military guy, and he owns a gazillion different military vehicles. I'm pretty sure he'll know everything there is to know about this. So I, I just want to get his opinion on it before I you know, go any further. Fantastic. When he gets here, let's crank it up and take it for a ride. Hopefully he doesn't get lost, because this is literally in the middle of nowhere. He'll find it, because he's ex-military. <laughs> that means he's got it going on. So what do you think, 1941 half-track? It's a beauty. It's a 1941 white half-track. They kind of use these like as a battlefield taxi back in World War II. Get troops in and out of the front lines. They couldn't fight in it, of course, but it got them close enough. And they did an amazing job doing the restoration on this. It's got the tools. It's got the winch on front, the ammo rack carriers on the side, and that amazing gun in the back. OK, I mean, what did they use that kind of machine gun for? That was an anti-aircraft machine gun. It's called a M45. It has 450 caliber mod deuces on them. And initially, they used them for anti-aircraft, but they eventually turned them to uh, anti-personnel weapons as well. OK, I guess it would work at that. <laughs> it does its job. Well, he wants $100,000 for it uh, without the um, apocalyptic thing on the top. <laughs> yeah, this one in particular, the data plates on it show that it is an original one in restored condition. I, I don't think you have any problems moving it. How does it run, Ron? It runs great. Shifts real nice, starts right up, brakes good, handles nice. You guys are welcome. I think you should crank it up and go for a ride. I'd suggest that before you buy something like that, you need to get behind the wheel. Can I shoot it? Let's see how the negotiations go. OK, so uh, we can take it for a test spin? Absolutely. Sweet. All right, you're in the passenger seat. <laughs> I can't sit up top of the guns. No, you can't sit with the gun while I'm driving. So I'm assuming it's a standard stick shift, no power steering. Easy to drive. Oh, they didn't build these things for comfort, did they? Tough driving 
this all day long. This is the ultimate off-road vehicle. I mean, you know what? It's not even off-road. You can just make your own road. You just like... <laughs> All right. This is badass, dude. <laughs> it drives shockingly well. Runs as good as it looks then? Yeah, I mean, like, you could have put a little bit more padding in the seats. <laughs> 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 but besides that, it's absolutely amazing. Way better than expected for a car that's 80 years old. Powertrain's unbelievable. Brakes were great. The power steering was all right. That was my arms. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the thing was badass, dude. The thing was really fun. You did a hell of a job restoring it. Thank you so much. All right, so what do you think it's worth? With the condition it's in, the fact that you can drive it, you ran it through the desert, you had a good time with it, I'm still saying the $100,000 is retail. Yeah, I'm assuming I could sell this pretty quick, right? Yeah, there's enough collectors that want this. I, I want it. <laughs> if we do make a deal, the gun's got to go away. I don't care. He said we could fire it if we bought it. So, what's your best price on it? I want 100000 for it because when I take the guns off, that's a lot more added expense for me to do that, so I'm dipping back into it more. Make me an offer. I'll give you 70000 Nah, I got... Uh, 90. 85. Well, I really don't want to go that low. Bad part of it is, I got nowhere to keep this thing. Uh... All right, 85000 you can shoot the gun. All right, cool. Uh, you want to show me how to do it? Let's do it. I'm paying for it. I should be shooting it. Yeah, but you got to drive it. I get to shoot it. <laughs> Kids, huh? OK, let's do this. Go ahead and jump on in. OK. Drop your feet on the footrest up front. <laughs> <laughs> now you got a power switch to your right OK. on the bottom. scary. All right. All right, there's an arming switch in front of you on the joystick. Yep. Go ahead and flip that cover up. Uh-huh. And your weapons are hot. All right. Everybody got air pros? We good? You're good. Shot, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is shocking. <laughs> that was awesome. I bet you wish you shot it. Um, it looked pretty amazing. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it was definitely one of the coolest things I ever did. It was like the world's best video game. <laughs> All right, so you can get the gun off. Yes, sir. I can leave it here for a while. Come down to the pawn shop, I'll get you paid. That'd be fantastic. Please find it a good home. I will definitely find it a good home. We're not keeping it. We are selling it, and the gun's going away. Is there any way we could keep the gun? No, we can't keep the gun. And first off, I should have been firing the gun, because I'm the one paying for it and everything. Oh, no, the pawn shop's paying for it, Dad. 